Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home, and I'm back today with another 4K review. And this time we are jumping into a modern movie, a brand new release, and we're talking James Bond. So we're gonna dive into No Time to Die on 4K Blu-ray. They're calling this the collector's edition. I think that's just some marketing there, but we'll be talking about the visuals, the audio, we'll be going through packaging and special features, and ultimately letting you guys know whether or not this is worth picking up in 4K for your collection. So if you like 4K Blu-ray, Blu-ray collecting content, home theater type stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. I don't post that regularly. I have a baby now and I have to post where I can and when I can. So the schedule is a little mixed up, but subscribing and having your notifications on, that'll make sure you don't miss any videos and you always see the latest. So that's the best way to stay up to date with everything going on from Films at Home and I appreciate the support. So No Time to Die on 4K. This just came in from MGM and I actually, I. I can't remember if this is the first release since Amazon purchased MGM. It may be, but I was excited to at least see that this got a 4K release because what that proves is that basically Amazon's not going to be killing off properties like James Bond, not bringing them to physical. They still at least support physical media and MGM still must have some say in that. Amazon has their streaming service, of course, but I think they will still put out the MGM movies on 4K. And I would expect to see more James Bond movies on 4K as well, especially some of the older titles. But No Time to Die, man, this was delayed and delayed again and delayed again. I think it was supposed to come out very early on, right when COVID kind of hit. It was gonna come out in like April, I think, of 2020. And it finally came out and uh, actually did very well worldwide, even with the pandemic going on. And, you know, it is most likely Daniel Craig's last movie as James Bond. I think that's confirmed. I don't know 100%, but most likely it is. And it kind of closes his five movie um, run here as James Bond. And I think he is one of the better James Bonds. And he's certainly been in some of the better James Bond movies that are out there. So visually, this is a stunning 4K scan, true 4K digital intermediate looks absolutely fantastic. Anytime you can get the latest equipment, high-end, high-budget movies, and you can get those true 4K scans, I'm just blown away by how good this format can look. And really, movies like this put other stuff like Fast and Furious 9 totally to shame because of how good this looks on 4K. This is how a modern shot movie should look on the format. It's a stunner. It's going to be an absolute reference quality disc for your setup. Amazing, amazing visuals. Of course, the James Bond movies always have incredible visuals, but when they're in 4K, they're just so sharp. They look incredible. I mean, it's as good as if you were watching it in a movie theater, truly. And in some cases, maybe even better, because depending on where your theater is, they may not have the best quality. And if you have a really good setup at your house, this thing just looks amazing. So everything's super clean. You know, it's a, it's a very digitally shot, clean, clean looking movie. Very bright. Dolby Vision HDR really helps this pop, especially over the Blu-ray. It's a great Blu-ray disc, of course, but Dolby Vision HDR and 4K, true 4K resolution, just take it to the next level. It takes a huge step forward over the Blu-ray. Being said, if you do want to buy the Blu-ray, it's not like the end of the world. If you want to save a few bucks, it's a great looking disc. But whenever you have something that's true 4K, I'd recommend going for the 4K disc. Now, the only disappointing part for me in the visuals was that there is no IMAX um, switching of aspect ratios here. And I know No Time for Die was available in IMAX. It has IMAX sequences. But on the disc here, everything's in 239 to 1. So you're getting the typical widescreen view. It's going to stay the same aspect ratio. You're going to have black bars on the top and on the bottom of your screen. And it's never going to go full screen to show those IMAX sequences like you would have seen in the theater. So that part of it's a little disappointing because I really do love when these IMAX movies or movies that at least have some IMAX scenes can be blown up to fill your whole screen. And I don't mind the switching in the aspect ratios because some of those scenes are absolutely stunning and it's well worth dealing with a little bit of a shift. Unfortunately, we don't get that here. There's no shift. This has been a trend lately. And as I learn more about it, it does seem that it's IMAX who's having the issue. IMAX is not allowing some of the studios to put the IMAX scenes on their discs 
there's some sort of licensing issue. Maybe they want to keep the rights to the IMAX uh, version so they can show it or put it on streaming services and make money that way. Um, but unfortunately, it seems like there's been a hard time lately in getting these IMAX scenes on 4K discs. So that is the only drawback. I wish it had been on here because those sequences would have been some of the best I've seen all year based on the way the rest of this disc looks. But unfortunately, you are just getting the standard widescreen throughout. Now for the audio in this, you're getting Dolby Atmos and this is the type of movie that Dolby Atmos is made for. It is incredible. I mean, it is room shaking, movie theater quality sound, even with only, you know, seven to nine speakers or even 5.1 if that's what you have. The way that this mix sounds is awesome. So if you can get to that Atmos, if you have a receiver, if you have the right speakers and equipment for it, an absolutely incredible audio experience. Low frequencies, bass is huge, overhead effects, all the surround effects, all those little object-based um, effects that create throughout the audio track in Atmos. You know, the way they can nicely place certain areas of the sound just awesome just an awesome awesome experience so as good as the visuals are the audio really does take it to the next level and it's an absolute masterpiece audio visually um, it, it's going to be a reference disc for you it's one of the best discs of the year and it is really a lot of fun regardless of what you think of this movie maybe you don't like Daniel Craig I love his James Bond movies. I had a ton of fun watching this and it just blew me away how good it looks and how good it sounds. And so for that, this is an absolute must have on 4K. Um, if, you're, if you're looking to spend a little bit over your budget or if you're just a person who buys Blu-ray to save some money, this is the perfect case to spend the extra five or six dollars, get the 4K disc, you won't be disappointed. It's well worth the extra money and I think you'll really enjoy the experience. So now packaging wise, we've got this slip cover here with collector's edition on it. I've never seen that before on an MGM disc or a James Bond movie, but you've got the same going on on the inside. And then you do have a digital copy. Unfortunately, the digital copy is iTunes only, which is really strange considering Amazon owns MGM. You'd think they'd want you to be able to get it on different platforms instead of Apple, who's like a main competitor for Amazon. Um, but it's only an Apple TV digital code, which is a little strange these days. And then on the inside, you've got your two discs. No artwork on those, just the black 4K and the silver Blu-ray disc. Now for bonus features, what you get here is you've got Anatomy of a Scene, Matera, which breaks down that scene in the movie. You've got Keeping It Real, the action of uh, No Time to Die, which is a nice breakdown of like some of the effects, some of the choreography and the fights, some of the big sequences. You've got A Global Journey, which talks about the movie and the locations, designing Bond and being James Bond, which are again just some behind the scenes on the, the character, the style, um, Daniel Craig, um, how he portrays the character, all that stuff. So like kind of basic special features, a couple scene breakdowns, some behind the scenes, some sort of filmmaker philosophy on the character, like all that kind of typical stuff. And that's what you get. So it's a little bit interesting that this is called like the collector's edition because it's definitely just marketing. This is a pretty standard 4K disc. There's nothing here that differentiates it from, you know, other 4K discs and new releases. So collector's edition, this is kind of just like how Disney, you know, does it, I think. They just slap it on every 4K release to kind of consider it the premium uh, format, the premium release for the movie. Seems like the same here, but nothing really crazy that you'd be missing if you didn't buy the 4K. The real reason to buy the 4K is for the excellent AV experience that honestly, I don't know if it can be beat by any other movies this year. And that's, it's a tough comparison because I've loved some movies that were shot on film. They look awesome on 4K, but just when you get something that's so well done, it has all the most modern equipment and technology and you put it on 4K disc, if they do it right, talking to you, Fast and Furious 9, if it's done right and it's not a CGI disaster, which this is not, what an excellent experience you can get. So I think you know by this point, but overall, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting the 4K, especially if you're considering buying the Blu-ray. If you're considering buying this at all, even digitally, or just saying, oh, I'll stream it, don't. Buy the 4K disc, you're gonna love the experience. It's well worth the extra money, and it's a disc you're gonna wanna have in your collection.
So I'll leave a link to the Amazon listing for this down in the video description. If you click that link and make a purchase with it, that helps support me and the channel. So I really do appreciate that. That's a great way to passively support me. Um, I get a little tiny bit of a kickback and it really helps the channel out. It helps me buy more movies and create more content. So I appreciate it. Also make sure to check out all the other links in my description for ways you can kind of passively support the channel and make sure you follow me on social media. That's a great way to stay in touch, see the latest on what's going on in the channel and in my life. So I've got Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. All those links are down there. So go find me over there. Give me a follow, say hi, and I'm always, you know, try to answer any messages I can and any comments I can. So it's a great way to get in touch outside of YouTube. But if you want to stick to YouTube, I post all my full length content here. So subscribing and having your notifications on is always the best way to make sure you never miss a full review. So that is it for the review. No time to die. This is going to be a contender for best disc of the year. It really is. It's absolutely incredible. Highly recommend it. And I appreciate you guys watching the review. So stay safe, stay healthy out there. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.